Stephen Wolfe, we're debating in the European Parliament today the motion for resolution to wind up the debate on the framework of the future EU-UK relationship. What's the main points from this document which you think need to be highlighted the most in terms of what the UK should be? Um, well, the most important thrust of the European Union's arguments here is that it wants to annex Northern Ireland. It wants to create a new border between the United Kingdom and Ile Northern Ireland by having that in the middle of the Irish Sea. It wants Northern Ireland to be fully within the kind of customs union, but therefore having to take all control of the rules and regulations that go into Northern Ireland, and more than that, have the control of the European Courts of Justice. What you're effectively seeing is an attempt by the European Union to take control of the sovereign will and nation of somebody else. And that's highly unacceptable, because they're doing so to try and uh, forge further division between the, the four nation states. Or, or that make up our great nation in order to be able to enhance their own negotiating position. Now obviously they would say, well, it was the UK's decision what they want, the, the kind of Brexit they wanted. We gave the options in terms of the single market customs union and the implications of that. And despite that, the government's position is to leave the customs union, leave the single market, mm -hmm. and therefore inevitably having to face a border problem in terms of Ireland and the Republic of Ireland and the UK mainland. So they would simply come back to you and say, well, it's your decision that these problems are here in the first place. We're just telling you what, the inev what you already knew. Uh, we already knew that when we leave the European Union, we will be leaving the customs union and the single market. Our prime minister, you know, our chancellor, numerous senior politicians made those statements and we saw it on a leaflet. So it isn't new to all of us at all. And to suggest that there isn't a border already existing is, is false. There clearly is a border. The only thing that makes the difference between the borders is that under our single market access that you can cross that border freely in certain circumstances. There are borders between the European Union and many nations across, across the rest of Europe and they seem to be able to move along perfectly happily without taking chunks of Switzerland that says that we'll have that part or we'll take chunks of Norway and we'll have bits of that. And they don't take chunks of Turkey to say that we'll have that as aspects of the agreements they have. So what they're doing here is something that is quite disgraceful, utterly underhand, and that's really about trying to sow further division and seeds in our nation to suit what they feel will benefit their negotiating position in the future. When you say so division is that are you talking specifically there in the context of uh, Northern Ireland and the UK mainland or is this also to do with Scotland as well I think there's a broader picture here and a broader plan there is a huge fear from the European Union that when Britain leaves and makes a success of Brexit that other nations would actually look at that and say hang on do we really need all that regulation and control of a single body of the Commission instead of having our democratic control and what they believe is that by sowing division within the United Kingdom and we've seen it here today by many MEPs who consistently argue that Brexit was a lie, that it's undemocratic, uh, Scotland voted for, for Remain and Northern Ireland voted for Remain, is just create an idea that there is division and therefore not helping the British government's own negotiating position. And that's ver further enhanced by having politicians in the United Kingdom who completely undermine our own government position. One of the things that has come out this week uh, as well in terms of the Brexit position is an apparent softening or at least rhetoric which, which indicates uh, maybe so some concessions on the idea of fisheries and who's going to have access to UK fishing territories post-Brexit, whether perhaps the UK will allow EU vessels access to fishing waters in the UK. What's your take on this? Do you think this is something uh, which, you know, in terms of what the UK Brexit, for particularly fishing communities, voted for in terms of Brexit, they voted exactly for the opposite and the UK government should steer clear well of any kind of compromise on that? Britain voted for exactly the opposite. The fishing communities voted for exactly the opposite. We can see that one of our reasons for leaving the European Union was the complete decimation of our coastal towns because, in part, of the decline of our fishing industry, which now sees huge amounts of it being controlled and fished by European Union basic uh, fishing organisations and ships. And we believe that there is a huge dividend to be made by actually taking control of our borders. Now, will we need to be able to have some sort of trade relationship that in the future allows some boats to come in? Maybe, that might be the case, but the clear principle should be that our fishing industry should be given the training, the ability, the investment to take control of that huge resource and bring jobs and money and investment back into those coastal towns. Now one of the things this motion, which is obviously a European Parliament document, 
sent by the European Parliament to help inform Michel Barnier in the negotiations is, is basically refuting of all, all the Prime Minister said in her, her Mansion House street, uh, speech, particularly in terms of managed divergence, picking and choosing certain aspects and certain sectors uh, where the UK will stay aligned and which sectors the UK will diverge, depending on the preference for the UK mm. economy. What do you see happening here? Do you think in the actual negotiations there's going to be far more compromise here because the UK very much still is no cherry picking? Well, what you hear and you've seen in that document is the European Union cherry picking. They have a single mindedness about their principle about how they should go on in the future. In order to create a country called the United States of Europe, you need to have everybody in that country all following the same rules and regulations with the same central banks and money, etc. And what you don't want to see is a strong competitor outside of that being able to diverge, being able to attract further businesses, being able to encourage its, its economy to grow because of its use of currency or taxation or regulation to improve the lives of its own people. And so what you're absolutely seeing here is the European Union in fear that Britain could do that. And that is why they are driving a hard bargain as far as they can see to have no access to the European Union market unless we align with their regulations. That is also an implicit understanding that their regulations are actually not the best regulations that could possibly work. If they're frightened that Britain can diverge, why don't they change their regulations as well? Stephen Wolfe, thank you very much. Thank you.